Okay, so thank you, Chairman, for the introduction. And my name is Takashi Oka at uh, Max at Max Planck Institute at Dresden. So today I want to talk about, actually it's really related to the previous talk. So my, the title is really Frog Engineering Multi Insulators and Control Spin Chirality. The concept is that if I have a multi insulator, just as in the last talk, and then I shake the optical lattice in a circular way, I get a spin system. But this spin system will have a effective Froke term, which, uh, so in addition to the Heisenberg term, I'll get this uh, three spin term, which is S cross S dot S. So this is a term called scalar spin chirality, and I can induce this coupling, J chi, as an effective uh, term. Uh, actually, this model, J, J chi model, it, it doesn't have a real good name, but so I'll just call it J, J chi model, but it's something similar to the Hardin model for free fermions uh, in a honeycomb lattice, but it's a many body and spin version of it, having many topological effects. I also uh, show that, so using this kind of Froch analysis, I propose that we can detect the scalar chirality using optical methods in solids, that, such as a circular dichroism. Okay, so actually my background is not uh, cold atom, but it's actually solid state physics. So in solid state physics, the idea of Froch engineering is also becoming very popular and uh, uh, becoming popular. But the difference between solid state and cold atom, one big difference is that in solid, we all already have the lattice. And the lattice uh, in the material, and there's electrons around it. Uh, the point is that, so in order to do Froch engineering, we need some shaking. This shaking is done in a ultra fast manner in the pump probe setup. So you shine a very intense coherent laser, which is called a pump. So this will excite your material, shake the phonons, and also uh, shake or drive the electrons as a quantum coherent way. Then you shine a second probe laser and take an animation. You can take an animation of the time step or the change of the quantum state. So this kind of idea, as I said, is now becoming very popular in uh, solid state as well. Many people are now start trying to use this uh, Froch engineering concept to control the spins, also mode transition, or even the controlling the topology, like in Froch topological insulators. Recently, we wrote a review article on this topic. Uh, this, uh, these examples are already relatively old, like 10 years ago, but it is possible to use circular porous light to when you shine it to magnets and flip the spin domains. So in a very ultra fast manner. So the time scale is very, very fast. It's picosecond, which is 10 to the minus 12 second. Uh, and by sh shining circular light, porous light, right or left, you can flip the spins from down to up and control the domains. Okay. Uh, in this slide, I try to contrast or uh, compare the difference between solid and this artificial manner, such as cold atoms or photonic systems, as we uh, had a very nice talk in, in this workshop. So the point is that in, also in solid state, like in the experiment in New Gedix group at MIT, which was done in 2013, the Froche states, it can be visualized. So they were successful in, so they shine circular polar light to a two-dimensional Dirac system and saw the, the Froche sideband and even saw the topological gap opening, which is an indication of having a Froche topological state, uh, which is something very close to, closely related to those experiments in uh, cold atoms, such as uh, this famous experiment in ETH, and also this uh, photonic Froch topological insulators. The difference is that, okay, so mainly in condensed matter, or sorry, solid state, the photon energy is typically very small compared to the bandwidth. Uh, whereas in artificial matter, you have the, the yeah, very nice uh, way to make your photon energy to be very large compared to the bandwidth, and this makes the Froch engineering very easy to control, okay? Okay, so in my talk, as I mentioned, I try to uh, show how uh, I can 
uh, you can obtain this JJ Kaye model from a motor initiator under circular polarized light. But this idea is really very similar to the, our previous uh, very old idea, where if you have a honeycomb lattice and you do this circular polarized shaking or laser, uh, the system it turns into a Froke churn initiator or this uh, Harden model. So the, there's a relation between a tight binding model in a circular polarized uh, shaking, which you can map it in the high frequency limit to the Harden model. So first, let me start by uh, going back to this uh, free fermion uh, problem. So in the Froke topological initiator, so here I will show you animation where I just put one electron. So it's a one particle uh, dynamics where I have a graphene sheet or honeycomb lattice and I'm sh say, shaking it circularly. And you can see that there's a higher edge mode going around. So, but then the complicated thing is that this is a very nice when my frequency, this shaking is very, very fast. When the shaking is very fast, okay, so this is the churn number phase diagram. So it's a phase diagram of this problem. So graphene in circular polarized light. But now I have this frequency, this frequency direction, and also the intensity of this external field. So this shaking. Uh, the Harden model can be realized when omega is large and the shaking is relatively weak. So in this regime, where the churn number will, of the Froke bands are one. So this is where those uh, famous e experiments have been performed. Also recently, there's a very nice experiment by uh, Lehisman's group, where they are now uh, moving on to these uh, states where the, the turn number has a different value from the original uh, the Harnay model. So you can have minus one as well. But then, okay. Oh, by the way, so uh, the, as I said, so when Omega, the frequency is very fast. So the driving is very, very fast. Uh, the froke magnus expansion is a very good uh, way to obtain the Froke effective Hamiltonian. And as you well know, uh, uh, so this is really a, a, a commutator of the, the, the Fourier mode of the Hamiltonian. And this gives the, the next nearest hoping term in the Harden model as an effective term. So from this kind of uh, reasoning, in the large omega limit, uh, I can show that this graphene under circular polarized light is equivalent to the Harden model. However, uh, things start to become very complicated when the frequency becomes smaller and smaller. And if you go really low down in frequency, the phase arm becomes really a mess. So that these are really churn, the churn number of the bands, but I get many numbers like 11 or minus 7 or so on. But this is the, actually the relevant regime for solid state applications because the photo energy is actually very uh, small. So even the experiment by NuGetic was done in a very low uh, omega regime. So uh, I will also comment that the measuring the whole coefficient the whole conductivity in solid state is a still very op open and very challenging problem at this point. Okay, now I move on to the, the main part, which is the interacting part. Uh, so as a small motivation, why I want to have this J, J, Kai model. So I have one slide to give an introduction. So J, the Heisenberg term, and the J, Kai, the scalar chirality term. So this scalar chirality, uh, so if I have this term, my ground state, my state will have, may have a finite scalar chirality. This scalar chirality will break the parity and time reversal symmetries. Uh, so this already signals something similar to quantum Hall effect. Actually, it's already, some materials are predicted or claimed to have these uh, uh, properties, as in the, uh, this therefore site material. Also, so that this was a, oh, if I have a frustration in the lattice, uh, I can even have a spin liquid. So in a spin liquid, I don't have any spin order, but still I can have this scalar hierarchy to be finite. 
So there was a nice uh, numerical calculation of the ground state of this model, and they show that when the ratio between j chi and j is above 0 0.15, so actually it's really small, then you get as a ground state a chiral spin liquid state. So this state was proposed by Lafferty in 87 to have some gapless edge mode, ground state degeneracy, and anionic excitations, so which is very similar to the qu fractional quantum four states. OK, so that was the motivation. Now, how do we get uh, obtain this uh, uh, effective Hamiltonian? So we start from the Hubbard model, as in yeah, the standard Hubbard model. But my hoping term has this shaking effect, the circular polarized shaking effect. And the goal is to derive the JJ chi model. But actually, uh, I can have two regimes to do this. So in the cold atom community, your omega can be very large, larger than u, and even larger than the hoping. Oh, sorry, this is not j, but uh, t, this t i j. Uh, this is actually the really well-controlled uh, regime. Solid state omega is typically very small, even smaller than the u. So it, it is still possible to get this mo uh, model, but I have to do some uh, further reasoning. So in the first regime, so large omega, it, this is very simple because I already from this uh, uh, Hamiltonian, I can do the Froche Magnus expansion, and I'll get the Harden model, and I will still have this uh, interaction term here. So, okay, of course I still I probably have more terms to come after this, but as a leading order, uh, uh, my model is a Harden Hubbard model. And if I do the standard 1 over u expansion, or the Schuy for roof tr transformation from the Hubbard, Harding Hubbard model at half fitting, I easily get the JJ chi model. Uh, at, uh, actually, it's the third order in the, these hopings. So t, t square and T2 will be my uh, above, OK, sorry, it's uh, above u square. This J chi, but then. If I expand it in the physical degrees of freedom, I have t to the fourth, e square, uh, omega minus three, and u to minus two. So this is that this is in the hoping it's a fourth order uh, term in the hoping t. Okay. Uh, this other regime. Okay. I won't go into the details, but the result I get we get this uh, uh, coefficient for the j chi term which looks some, a little bit complicated. Uh, the way that we do it is using the so-called froke schrieffer wolf transformation, or more easily, it's a 1 over u minus n omega expansion. So since I have photon absorption and emission, uh, my energy denominator is uh, shifted. Actually, this has been uh, initiated by this paper by Mentnik, Barza, and Eckstein, Martin Eckstein, in uh, 19, uh, 2015, and we followed it and went to the fourth order. Uh, actually, also Klassen and the Stanford group have done the equivalent calculation. Uh, as a not as a pictorial uh, exp uh, description, I will just show you the usual picture. So, my, if I have these electrons here, I'm going to move it from here to there. And there, so there, there, there. And at each, each step, I can absorb or emit photons, circular polarized photons. And these terms uh, will lead to uh, this expression. So as you can see, I have j, 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 j. This j is uh, actually the best of functions. And uh, in the denominator, I have omega and u. OK, so what's the physical consequence from this? So first of all, the most important in, in, interesting thing is how large can my j chi be? So remember that if j chi uh, versus j is like 0 0.15, I can be in the, the spin, higher spin liquid phase in the Kagome lattice. Uh, so this is the plot that actually it's uh, uh, in the large u limit. So when u is 10, 15, 20, and we did some comparison to numerical calculations, but uh, J, the exchange coupling, as the intensity of the laser becomes strong, will decrease. And even there's a sign flip. This sign flip of the exchange coupling was uh, initially 
discovered by this uh, paper, in this paper, uh, which is something, you can think there's something as a uh, spin version of dynamic localization and uh, band inversion, which is very uh, famous in the data community. Then the scalar chirality term. So initially it's zero, and then it can go up, and then it oscillates. So what would be the large, largest value? For, for example, if I go around here, so it would be A being 1.5 and U is 10, my J would be 0 0.4, something like that, and J chi would be something like 0 0.2. So actually this is, the J chi is really large. So if it's possible to go to the ground state, so if I can cool down within this uh, Froke many body states, which is not so easy, but po maybe possible, then you can get a chiral, chiral spin liquid phase. Another uh, thing that I can uh, sh show or sh uh, predict from this uh, calculation is that since this J chi, okay, I can do expansion of J chi in terms of the field strength, and the lowest order is going to be something like this. So I have a function of u and omega in the coefficient, but then I have this E star times E, so this is the strength of the circular pores, right? So this goes into this part, this J chi. So I can look at this as a term, which is the intensity of the circular pores, right, times the scalar chirality as, as a conjugate variables in the Hamiltonian. So just as in, if I have a Zeeman term, H and S, the, the magnetic field, and the spins are conjugate variable, and I can control the spin by magnetic field. In the same way, I can control or and even detect the scalar chirality by circular pores, right? So from that, uh, uh, if so, we, we calculate the optical dielectric function in the system, and we obtain that if okay now okay, actually this argument is very similar to uh, uh, the talk by Christoph Wittenberg in, in the I think it was yesterday. So we can use circular dichroism to prove the scalar chirality if it exists. So I have the relation that my optical dielectric function uh, depends on the scalar chirality. So if my material has the scalar chirality, then there's some uh, circular dichroism response. So this is a nice way experimentally to detect the uh, scalar clarity if it exists in those uh, candidate materials. And we also have a uh, plot on how this response should look like in omega or frequency space. Okay, so that's all. And this is a summary. So the summary is very simple. So laser, especially circular polarized light, can control and detect spin or spin scalar clarity in multi initiators, so this term. Uh, this prediction is based on the Froke effective Hamiltonian, so this uh, J J chi model, and its expression where this J chi is related to the circular polarized light by through this kind of form, and that's all. So thank you very much for your attention.